All right, folks, Vaidak and Tanu here from Middlewani with us today. We have majestic, beautiful Anna Murphy of Silla Darling. How are you doing today? Hi, I'm doing fine. How are you? I am good and I'm sure you guys must be super pumped to have the the first phase of your, you know, career in the form of This Is The Sound, the debut album. One month left. Super stoked for the record. Yeah, we're very happy. We're very proud. So now we're just kind of leaning back a bit. Right, and you know, you already released two tracks, and I, that that made me think that you know the two tracks came out last year, and now you released Black Moon a week ago, which was uh, you know uh, obviously a music video. Uh, what was this whole agenda agenda behind releasing something uh, like months ago, so that probably fans want to get taste of what they can expect from Cello Darling? Yeah, I mean, we just wanted to kind of give a sign of life, I guess. And you know, it's also as if you create, you want to you want to have an output. So it was important to us to get something out there. All right, and how has been the response so far? Like, you know, the, the transition from uh, tracks that were released eight months ago to Black Moon has it still been positive? with uh, you know fans listening to you guys um, literally every day yeah i think the feedback is very good we're very happy with how the fans are reacting so i would say it's a success it's a success that's really good to hear you guys played a, a couple of shows uh, last month in fact this month uh, which were more like a uh, debut shows for the band in, in in germany i believe right yeah, we played some shows and um, like just small kind of warm up shows, and they were cool. Uh, a great introduction for fans to see what uh, how these songs uh, are, are shaping up live because uh, I'm sure you guys played a lot of tracks from the new album just to give them an idea of what they can expect. Yeah, exactly. I mean, the the special thing about these shows was that basically. Um, like 90% of the set they didn't actually know like they had never heard it so that's pretty cool i think indeed now you know before we get into the album talk about it in detail you know when i look back at your career you know you started it way too early I, I don't recollect you know many musicians starting so early but you joined elevity at the age of 16 and you were already a musician before that you branched out into various mm -hmm. projects, which is, you know, phenomenal. And then you had your solo album titled Seller Darling. And now it's mm -hmm. become a full-fledged band. Uh, how's mm -hmm. this journey been so far from a person, you know, from a childhood to someone purely professional, you know, that, that zone from late 90s to 2017? Um, well, I don't really know. I just kind of go with whatever happens like life is just one big wave and um and basically playing music and playing in a band is what made me into what i am today well basically i'm still a child uh, <laughs> just a, a bigger one than i used to be i mean we all um, are just hidden inside yeah us. exactly <laughs> exactly yeah i would say that's about it. I don't really know how to describe it. Time flies and, you know, you have a finally mm. an album. And, and, you know, it's the roots of, of Anna Murphy are in folk. I mean, everyone knows that everyone has been inspired when, you know, as they've been listening to you from last to one decade with the Liberty. But on this album, you know, it's, it's the very first, at least I have heard, from the barrage of bands in this genre where an album is extremely different. Uh, the feeling that comes out of the album when, when, when I listen to it is very different than what other bands are producing in the same genre. And that's a very good thing. Lots of different styles fused Ooh. perfectly into it. I'm sure that was, was there sort of an intention for you guys to write something different or it just came out naturally out of nowhere? It came out naturally. Like we, we were also a bit surprised at the end result because what we didn't want to do is... Um, discuss what we're gonna sound like because that's not very organic and so yeah we just composed and composed and this is what just happened basically absolutely you have you know 12 plus songs and and generally when an album is very long i get a feeling that there are some mm -hmm. fillers 
I mean, it's it's a common thinking. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I know as as a journalist, when I think, I feel there are some fillers. But on this album, as I start from the first till the end, the first thing that that kind of gave me a very positive vibe was the arrangements, the way the song, mm-hmm. uh, the placement of the songs, the order, and then you have a good balance of the the heavy elements, and then you have the folk elements, the spiritual vibes that's come on coming out of the the native instruments which you have used on this. So you know the journey from challenge to hermit to hedonia. each track that that sort of leaves an impression on the mind of a listener and it's a lot to absorb you know if you ask me yeah. we have so many instruments that are and this album is a grower we didn't really think about that to be honest like the album wasn't hard to write because all the ideas just kind of came pouring out of us so yeah i mean you like as you can hear we have a lot of material so we w- we didn't have to worry about the the length and that we don't have enough we actually had almost too many ideas so yeah it all happened very um yeah naturally and effortlessly and yeah it was actually uh, amazing just the writing process obviously after at the studio we worked very hard and we had to put so much energy into it but just writing the songs that really was pretty easy it sounds good see i would like to ask uh, about the instruments uh, that you have used in this album and uh, like just to get it out like i think uh, instrument wise this album is profound and uh, the cool. drums have been uh, used perfectly and the guitar works in the background are so brilliant and your uh, use of the hurdy gurdy in the foreground also uh, is like really beautiful all the three work so beautifully and uh, cool. despite despite all of this uh, complexity with i think every instrument shines out in its uh, own place and uh, despite mm-hmm. despite all this uh, multiple layers i can hear clearly uh, you know every instrument playing and it leaves an impression in the minds of uh, the listener so uh, was this cool. uh, conscious I'm glad to hear that <laughs> yeah uh, so mm-hmm. was this a conscious decision to blend all of this together and uh, like uh, leave an impression on the minds of uh, the listener and uh, no it just happened um like we didn't think about you know what do we want to sound like or what genre are we going to be in or how often am i going to use the hurdy gurdy it just happened naturally okay and uh, like coming to uh, the genre uh, because we know that every uh, folk album you know has a sort of a, a low or a mystery approach to it uh, so you know when listening to this songs i personally felt like this vibe of uh, spirituality and this mystery and uh, like like with any folk album should so is this mm-hmm. based off any tale um th- they're all stories that i invent okay so it's all like the i think the spiritual vibe you're getting is just pure like it's about imagination basically and yeah. the power of the mind which is you know the most powerful thing on the planet um that's how that's why god exists because it's in our mind it's what we imagine you know so uh, how i go about writing lyrics is i um i take the feelings and experiences i have and i turn them into stories and that's basically like the concept that we have lyrically okay uh so uh coming to your vocals i think mm-hmm. that uh, uh, i've been listening to you uh, since you elevated days days and i think that uh, in this album i think this is one of the best things that i've heard from you and like uh, you know the pinnacle of your career if you may call so uh, mm-hmm. how, how was the experience uh, doing this album very good um it was of course hard um because uh like you said you know before i wasn't like the lead singer in my previous band yeah so it was um you know long days uh a lot of uh, work on the voice and everything but it was great fun and it's great to explore the voice and see what it can do all the different things yeah i i noticed all 
uh, all the you know diverse styles that you've put into this uh, album mm-hmm. and like you said since uh, you know previously uh, you were not the lead singer and Uh, you and Trigal worked together for uh, the vocals and the songwriting. So mm-hmm. uh, now that uh, you are in uh, your own band and you are the boss of the vocals, so how is how mm-hmm. is this, uh, freedom influencing you? And how did you uh, write your songs, uh, experiencing this new freedom? Um, well, we work very like our band is a real group effort. You know, there's no mastermind and then the others in the background. It's really a symbiosis of us three. Yeah. And well, obviously, Evo and I are the songwriters, but we most songs are always arranged together in the rehearsal room. We do a lot of jamming. So it's all very organic. It's kind of what a lot of people imagine uh, what bands are like in general. Yeah, yeah. That sounds great. It's a, it's a proper teamwork, if you ask me, because uh, it's not mm-hmm. just uh, Anna Murphy taking the foreground and letting the others stay behind. Evan leaves his own mm-hmm. impression. The drums have, you know, they, they sound gay. The, the bass on the album sounds really good, even though I felt that, you know, it's more of a, mm-hmm. uh, the instrument driven record. The bass was, was, was fabulous. So, you know, with mm-hmm. your relationship with them, uh, you know, as bandmates, and now, you know, it's even more closer Uh, to what extent do you feel have you guys put in your personal influences on this album? Yeah, um, like we, what we wanted to do was we wanted to also um, do a bit more elaborate uh, song arrangements. Um, I mean, Elveti, it was great music, but the arrangements were almost always the same. You know, the, the verse and then the chorus and then this and then that. And we wanted to brainstorm also a bit, you know, can what can we do differently? How can we make this song more interesting? And um, you notice like that towards the end, we get a bit more experimental, a bit more creative. So that's definitely we want to break out a bit and do something a bit newer. Yeah. That's really cool. You know, over the period of time, I mean, uh, I've read stories. I, mean, I don't know whether it's true or not that that um, after the the uh, origins thing was done, that you guys you kind of wanted a break from from for some time to maybe recharge your batteries because as a human mind, you need some time to kind of get back into your regular mode. So you know, during that time, was it sort of impacting you musically with a lot of touring worldwide and album cycle continuously with no break whatsoever? I'm not sure. I mean, um, I I had a writer's block for about two years, but that's not. I mean, that didn't affect Elvati that much because Kriegel was the main songwriter. You know, I mean, I always had to have ideas, but not. I didn't have to write whole songs. But I mean, I don't know how the others in the band felt. I think a break would have been good, but you know. Um, Considering that both sides are very happy now, you know, maybe it was good. And if it wasn't for that, we wouldn't have got this album, <laughs> isn't it? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and and you as a solo writer have toured Australia. I remember getting um, you you were there mm-hmm. for your uh, like obviously your solo effort. So with, with with the album releasing, and I'm sure you would want to travel and uh, spread the music with with your fans around the world. Uh, you have come to India many times. And I believe it's mm-hmm. kind of become your second home after <laughs> Europe or, or North America. So how was your experience here for the fans, the culture and you know, all things India? Um, I think it's great. I loved it. Like the, the audience is so energetic and I really like experiencing other cultures. It's very inspiring. So um, Anna, before we conclude, mm-hmm. if you had to sum up the album, this is the sound. In a sentence, mm-hmm. what would you say? It's a, a dark but also light journey that takes you to many different places and it lets you dream. Thanks, Anna. You know, it was cool. great having a chat with you. Good luck with the release. And great. I hope you get to go every every part of the world. Thank you very, very much. Thank you, Anna. Pleasure. To- Thank you. All right. You have a great, great evening ahead and uh, we will catch you soon. Yes, you too. Thank you.